it just, it's, it's amazing. Again, like I love when you brought up, it sounds naive. And, and Bill Gates was saying the same thing. I know that people think miracle sounds crazy, but it's actually not. It's not naive and it's not crazy. And it's not even miraculous. It's the most ordinary birthright we're all walking around with. We just don't see it in moments because we're so tricked by and compelled by thinking our thinking is right or real or somehow more fixed or concrete than it actually is. There, there's another piece to this, which is, which is kind of just picking up on that, is, is, is part of why it seems naive is, well, because people have been trying to solve these problems for thousands of years or hundreds of years or however many years, depending on the nature of the, of the problem. But here's the thing, is if we, if we kind of us and out here is that that's the world i don't know how to draw it but um i was just thinking you did a really nice profile i wish i could do that yeah. that well well i'm i'm making up for it with my drawing of the world <laughs> so that's earth like the world that's a representation of the I world i think that the tectonic plates are coming back together it's kind of pangea yeah it's, yeah yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Cool. um well so we've spent thousands of years looking at this problem from every angle, right? The greatest minds in the world have looked at these problems from every angle. But remarkably little time has been spent looking at that which creates the world. Looking into the fertile void, looking into the infinite well. So we look at what's come out of the well and we go, what are we going to do about this? We look at the cookies that have come out of the oven that are burnt and go, what are we going to do about these burnt cookies? Oh, I know, we'll put frosting on them. Well, now you have burnt cookies with frosting on them. Well, what about chocolate sprinkles? It'll help, but they'll still be burnt cookies with frosting and chocolate sprinkles on them. Well, let's break them into smaller pieces to make them easier to eat. Yes, they are easier to eat burnt cookie pieces with chocolate <laughs> sprinkles and frosting on them. Right? You can play that game forever, or you can go back to the oven and see what's coming out of the oven next. And if you don't like that batch, if that batch doesn't work, if that batch is off, if the recipe is off, if that batch is still a little sour or a little too sweet or a little burnt, well, you can go back to the oven again. You can go back to the oven as many times as you need to. You can go back to the well as many times as you need to. But if you're looking to the oven, there's a much better chance you're going to get fresh cookies. If you're looking to the source of the world, there's a much better chance you're going to find yourself in a better world. And, and just in, in a really practical way, the difficulty is that we think we can predict the future based on the past. Which, if it wasn't a thought-created world, might make some sense. Right? But if it's a thought-created world and the nature of thought is transient, it changes. When we, whenever we let it, whenever we let kind of go, oh, I don't know, boom, new thought every time. Well, we don't know what new thought is going to come to us in a future now. So we can't predict the future based on the past because that doesn't take into account thought in the moment. New thought in the moment. New thought in the moment. So whatever models we have for predicting the future are only accurate to the extent that thinking doesn't change. But fortunately, thinking is a lot more likely to change than the world. Because the nature of thought has changed. Right? You can't hold a thought in your head for any length of time. You don't know what you're going to be thinking in five minutes. And yet we're pretty convinced that the world's still going to look like this in five years, 50 years. 500 years. And that's scary. Right? That's a scary thought for most of us. And it's a scary enough thought, because we don't see that it's thought, that we don't want to think about it. So we ignore it. And we go back to making the best of the burnt cookie. Well, there is another possibility. It's such a simple possibility. It's such a friendly possibility. I hate to say it, but look within. Look to the unknown. Look to the not yet created. Look to the place where the world comes from. See what new can come. And it's weird because, like, I don't know about if this happens to you on your, because we, we both work with private clients. We work with groups over, over time. 
And, and one of the things that often happens, actually I do know you because you talked about this, one of the things that often happens is people will have a shift in consciousness. They'll see things differently and they'll talk about, ooh, can we talk about how I'm going to bring this back into my life? Mm-hmm. How I'm going to bring this back into that real world that I left and how, how I'll handle that world better? And you can't because... With new thinking, you're not, you can't go back to that world. Right? Heraclitus said you can't step in the same river twice. Well, it's the same thing. You can't live in a world that your old thought created when you have new thought. It's not there anymore. And that's, that's really good news. So I was working with this one, this one guy who was absolutely... Well, he came because he was having so much trouble with the people at work. They were abusive to him. They were mean to him. They were, I mean, it was like a five-year-old, but I mean, it was really like, you, you know, I, and, and, and they, he wanted resources, you know, confidence and all that stuff, and he found it, because the truth is, when we're not all caught up in this, there's a natural confidence, there's a natural well-being, there's a natural presence, there's a natural receptiveness, connectivity that comes with us. There's a kind of a natural genius that comes out of us. We're pretty bright when we're not overthinking it, right? We do pretty well. And so he was really keen to know, well, I wonder what it's going to be like when I bring the new me back to those horrible people. And I kind of forgot about it because I had a back-to-back client thing. And a couple weeks later, I had a follow-up call. And I said, how's it going? And he goes, good. And I said, well, how are you getting on with the, the people? And he said, oh, I haven't had a chance to put that to the test. I said, oh, have you been off work? He said, no, I've been at work. I said, but what, do you, what do you mean you haven't put it to the test? He said, well, I don't know why, but for some reason they're just being really nice to me. <laughs> right? If we don't know it's a magic trick, we think it's magic. It's magical. It's really cool. But it's not magic. It's how it works. 